You have quite a number of teams in the NFL that are frankly desperate for help at the quarterback position. My Chicago Bears, of course, being one of them, along with teams like the Cleveland Browns, the San Francisco 49ers, the New York Jets. You should probably throw the Jacksonville Jaguars into that mix as well. And there are other teams that, even if they're not desperate for help at the position, are still searching for that long-term answer, that franchise guy at the position. And when you look at this upcoming draft, it's perceived to be relatively weak at the quarterback position. And I don't know that I completely disagree with that assertion at this moment in time. It's not surprising to hear a lot of buzz about a quarterback who could be potentially available in the offseason via trade. And no, I'm not talking about Tony Romo. I'm talking about Jimmy Garoppolo. And it's not a surprise that the New England Patriots would at least be willing to listen to offers for their former second round pick in 2014. It would behoove them as an organization to weigh and consider all options because that's what good organizations do. And now with floating out there potentially, and even though it was Adam Schefter and others reporting it, you know it was the Patriots directly or indirectly leaking this. The price suggested and floated for Garoppolo was put out there for a reason. You know, when you look at it from a Patriot standpoint, in theory, if you could take a former second round pick who hasn't played very much in three years and turn him into a first and a fourth round pick, that would be a perceived to be genius move. I mean, a second round pick at any position, even quarterback, that barely plays in three years, and you've turned him into a future first and fourth round pick. Or maybe more. I mean, that's a hell of a way of using draft pick currency and extorting somebody to overpay for a guy who's barely played. And when you look at Jimmy Garoppolo from the New England Patriots standpoint, you still have Tom Brady. Now, how much longer do you have Tom Brady? You don't know. But for Garoppolo, yeah, you've invested a second round pick in him a few years back. But he started two games for you in three years. And in those two starts, he might not have been terrible. He might have been good. But two starts is in no way a guarantee of anything. And to be fair, sometimes you don't know what you've got until the opportunity has presented itself. Like with Tom Brady back in 2001 when Bledsoe got hurt early on in the season. But how much can you really be married to a kid with two starts in three years? So if somebody comes a call in and gives a Sam Bradford type package like the Minnesota Vikings did to get a Garoppolo, the Patriots have to do everything to consider it. And they might even have to take it. But what I'm focused on more so is the fact that Jimmy Garoppolo is not worth a first round pick, let alone a first or fourth round pick. Like I saw somebody the other day on Twitter, it was a guy that goes by the Twitter handle NFL Draft Insider, floated the thought that he didn't like any of the quarterbacks in this draft more than Garoppolo, and therefore he would have no problem with giving up a first round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo. Now the first part of that assessment I understand, if he thinks in theory that he would take Garoppolo over any of those guys. But trading a first round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo is retarded. Period. Why would you trade so much for a quarterback who has shown so little? When you talk about not liking the rookie class, and maybe we don't like the rookie class because they're not that good, or maybe there is a hidden gem or two in there and people just aren't looking hard enough to find them. You basically have a situation where Garoppolo that is somewhat similar to what the Denver Broncos had with Brock Osweiler. You were looking down the barrel of having to potentially pay this guy big-time franchise quarterback money and when he had six or seven career starts. And it showed flashes, but only flashes, and nothing that seemed to be greatness. So ultimately, the Houston Texans were the ones that stepped up and paid him franchise quarterback money. And now the Houston Texans have sunk in a lot of money into, frankly, a bad investment in Brock Osweiler. And you're looking at the Texans and you're saying, why didn't they just draft a young guy and develop him? They basically just sat there and paid a 26-year-old rookie in Brock Osweiler with hardly any experience in four years a shit ton of money. And ultimately, if you're a team that's going to trade even just a first-round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo, not only are you giving up a premium draft pick to get him, you know you're not giving up that premium draft pick without having some type of certainty of being able to work out a long-term deal with the guy. So you lose draft pick currency and valuable draft pick currency at that, and you're going to sink a lot of money into the dude for a 25-year-old rookie 
who next year will basically be a 26-year-old rookie, whether he's in New England or whether he ultimately is traded to another team. If I'm going to end up with a rookie quarterback, I'd rather take a guy that's 21, 22 years old that hasn't been touched by any other NFL coaching staff than one that's 25, 26, 27 years old with very little NFL starting experience. We can sit there and talk about, well, you've had a few years to get coached up and practice at the NFL level and be coached at the NFL level, and there's something to be said about that. But you're also talking about a situation where this guy hasn't played in several years in terms of consistent live football. And I don't care how much you practice, I don't care how much you study, there is nothing that replicates playing the game like actually playing the game. So what is the difference between a 26-year-old Jimmy Garoppolo next year and a 21- or 22-year-old rookie? The real difference is, is the amount of draft picks you had to spend in a trade in order to get Garoppolo and how much more money Jimmy Garoppolo is going to cost you than what you would spend on a first-round pick on a quarterback. Like you look at the Denver Broncos, they ultimately let Brock Osweiler go, and late in the first round they traded up a little bit and got Paxton Lynch. Now is Paxton Lynch going to be the guy long-term? I don't know. He might not be. But I'd rather have done what they did with Paxton Lynch than sink all that money into Brock Osweiler. Lynch is several years younger and a whole hell of a lot cheaper from a salary cap perspective. That's what a smart organization does. And John Elway, the Denver Broncos, they are a smart organization. They have the Lombardi Trophy and several playoff appearances over the past few years to prove it. Furthermore, and here's the important question that so often isn't asked in these type of situations. If he can truly be the guy, why would New England trade him? For as smart as Bill Belichick is alleged to be, we're talking about the greatest head coach of all time. Even when sometimes general manager Bill Belichick gets in the way of head coach Bill Belichick, he's still the best, best coach that's ever walked the planet. If Garoppolo, he knew, was going to be that future dude, but it might still be another two or three years before he got to that point, why the hell would you allow Garoppolo to leave? That makes no freaking sense. And when you think about a somewhat recent relevant comparison to this situation, I think about Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. The Packers took Brett or Aaron Rodgers late in the first round of the 2005 draft, knowing he wasn't going to play right away. And it ultimately ended up being that he got very little action in his first three years as Brett Favre wound down the tail end of his career in Green Bay before going on to the Jets in later Minnesota. They didn't trade Aaron Rodgers. They sat on him. They kept him and were patient and bided their time. And lo and behold, what do you know, 11 drafts later, there hasn't been one drafted that's been better than Aaron Rodgers. Who? Matt Ryan? Russell Wilson? Joe Flacco? Brady Quinn? Jamarcus Russell? 11 drafts later, Andrew Lux? None of these guys are sniffing Rodgers' butt cheese, and it's just that simple. So, posing this question in a Green Bay Packer reference or in sense, if you had a thought that Aaron Rodgers could be what Aaron Rodgers has ultimately proven himself to be, a future Hall of Fame quarterback who in a few years could potentially be thought of as arguably the best passer in NFL history, would you trade him after 2007, if Favre said, I want to come back and play another year or two for this organization, would you trade him for one first-round pick? Would you trade him for a first and a fourth? Would you trade him for a first and a third? Would you trade him for a first and a second? Would you trade him for two firsts? Would you trade him for three first-round picks? Would you trade him for four first-round picks? The answer, unequivocally, is hell fucking no! Ding dong, dumb dicks, the most important commodity you can have in the NFL is a young franchise quarterback. If you truly believe you've got that guy, there is no price that anybody could pay to pry him out of your freaking cold, clammy hands. None. If I had Aaron Rodgers, I wouldn't trade him for four first round picks if I thought he could be that dude. Especially look at what Aaron Rodgers has become. 11 draft cents have elapsed, and not one quarterback picked has been better or close to better than Aaron Rodgers. On top of that, recent big trades for quarterbacks have not worked out. Ask the Eagles and Vikings about Sam Bradford for different reasons. It didn't work. The Raiders trading what they traded ultimately, a first and second round pick to get Carson Palmer. It didn't work. Some people will be a smartass and point to Alex Smith. How much better or worse would they really be if they didn't have Alex Smith and they would have drafted somebody else like a Derek Carr, for Christ's sakes? 
I mean, really, would they be that much worse off? Probably not than if they had Noodle Arm Alex. No. And they would have kept the two second-day picks that they gave up in order to get him so they could have even more talent potentially on the offensive side of the fucking football. And then to top it all off, I can't believe how many idiots sit there and try to suggest to me that trading for a quarterback is a good idea when I'm a Bears fan and I just lived through eight years of the Jay Cutler God-blessing experience. Now, granted, the Bears and Jerry Angelo, the Ayatollah, and all of his infinite stupidity gave up two first, a third, and an average NFL starter in Kyle Orton to get Jay Cutler. The one question that should have been asked back then in that offseason before the 2009 season is the Broncos just took this guy three years ago in round one. Granted, you had Josh McDaniels coming in, a new head coach. Him and Cutler apparently aren't getting along. But why is this team so desperate to trade this guy and so willing to trade this guy when a few drafts ago in 2006, they traded up from 15-11 to go get him. They traded up to get him, took him. He's coming off of a Pro Bowl season, still the only one he's ever had. Coming off of a 4,000-yard season, still the only one he's ever had. And the Broncos are willing to trade him. Again, teams don't trade franchise quarterbacks willy-nilly unless they're complete total morons. Furthermore, if he truly is that dude, why would anybody want to trade him? And especially in the Cutler case, he had already had three years of primarily being a starter, at least two and a half seasons worth. Why the hell would the Broncos want to trade him? Of course, Jerry Angelo and the idiots involved with Chicago didn't ask that most important of questions. And they ultimately ended up with a trade that wasted eight years of my fucking life as a Bears fan. To sit there and have people suggest that Jimmy Garoppolo is worth a first-round pick based off of two career starts is fucking lunacy. And they are idiots. On top of all of this, if you want to build a championship team, a consistent championship contender in the NFL, you must, especially in today's game, draft and develop your own quarterback. Now, the asshats will bring up the exception to the rule. But by and large, it's an exception to the rule for a reason. It is an exception to the rule. And I can't believe I get shit about this. I can't believe people try to fight me on this. I can't believe people disagree with me on this. Because there is no argument to be made. Sure, asshats will sit there and bring up, Whoa, the 49ers once traded a second and fourth round pick to get Steve Young back in 87. Yeah, they did. And Steve Young also wasn't the full-time starter in San Francisco until 1991. He also came from a system in San Francisco that was one of the best for quarterbacks in NFL history. He also got a couple of years of tutelage under one of the greatest head coaches of all time in Bill Walsh, working with one of the great offensive staffs led by Mike Holmgren and other guys that the league has ever seen. So your comparison is stupid. And then Brett Favre, you know, Ron Wolf really gambled. He gave up a first-round pick for a guy that the year before was drafted in the second round and only threw four passes as a rookie in Atlanta. Two of them were incompletions, or excuse me, two of them were interceptions. I think one was a fumble sack and the other one was an incompletion. It happened to work out. But again, these are exceptions to the rule. For every Steve Young type of situation, there's Jay Cutler, there's Sam Bradford twice, there's Carson Palmer, Jeff George going further back. Then you get the ass that will sit there and say, well, guys like Trent Dilfer and Brad Johnson and Drew Brees and Peyton Manning have won Super Bowls since 2000. Okay, so out of the last 16 Super Bowl champion teams, four of them, a quarter of them, 25% of them have been quarterbacked by somebody who wasn't drafted and developed by the team. If anything, that only bolsters and strengthens my argument because at the end of the day, the name of the game in the NFL is to be a championship contender team and hoist the Lombardi Trophy. Win Super Bowls. That's what you're in the business for. That's why you play the game is to win championships, period. So I would rather go the way that 75% of the Super Bowl champions went than the 25%. And I would rather not sit there and stick to the 25% crew, especially when Trent Dilfer, Brad Johnson, and washed up end of the road Peyton Manning all won Super Bowls with the defenses carrying their fucking asses. It's that simple. So we're talking about three of the great defenses of my lifetime in terms of single-season defenses. The 2015 Broncos, the 2002 Buccaneers, the 2000 Ravens. And we're using that as an argument piece that you can win championships and be a championship contending team 
with quarterbacks that you trade for or sign in free agency. No! And even if you want to bring up the Drew Brees shit, Drew Brees' situation was different because this Drew Brees was not the Drew Brees you saw early on in San Diego before they ultimately got Phillip Rivers out of that 2004 draft. Then he had two good seasons. But mind you, he had that major soldier, shoulder injury that forced the Dolphins to ultimately take a pass on him before he ended up in New Orleans. And then he went on to become a Super Bowl champion and a first battle Hall of Famer. Again, exception to the rule, shit. And even some of the Super Bowl leasers, Kerry Collins, Kurt Warner twice, Rich Gannon, Jake DeLome, Matt Hasselbeck, Peyton Manning twice. There's still far more Super Bowl losing quarterbacks than winning quarterbacks that were drafted and developed by their team. In fact, again, 12 of the last 16 Super Bowl champions drafted and developed their quarterbacks, including four championships for the Patriots, two for the Steelers, two for the Giants. I hope this is starting to sink in. Nine of the last 16 Super Bowl losers drafted and developed their quarterbacks. And you look at this year's NFL. Ten of the 12 playoff teams, as it currently sets right now, will have drafted and developed their quarterback. With the Kansas City Chiefs being a notable exception, because they traded for Alex Smith. And then you've got the Houston Texans. Savage is, even though he was once drafted by the team in the fourth round, that's true. Osweiler was the primary starter this year, so I'm not really counting that. But everybody else, the Patriots, the Cowboys, the Packers, the Lions, the way it sits right now, the Giants, the Seahawks, the Steelers, the Dolphins, who now it's Matt Moore, but before that, their primary starter was Ryan Tannehill, the Raiders. These are all teams that have drafted and developed their quarterbacks. And even some of the teams on the outside looking in who just missed the playoff base or could potentially still sneak in. Washington, Tampa Bay, drafted, developed their quarterbacks. Denver, drafted, developed their quarterback. Tennessee, drafted, developed their quarterback. Baltimore, drafted, developed their quarterback. So you're going to tell me, in the spite of the face of all this overwhelming evidence, that the way to go in the NFL is to draft and develop your quarterback if you want to ultimately become a championship contending team. In spite of all of the evidence that suggests that if a guy is such a can't-miss franchise quarterback, a team that knows what they're doing like the New England Patriots never let him go. Even though you're looking at a guy who is going to basically be a 26-year-old rookie next year in the 2017 season with two career starts, you're telling me that this guy is worth a first-round pick, let alone a first and fourth-round pick. This is that stupid shit I be talking about. These people that talk about the NFL, then you just throw shit out there, and it makes absolutely no fucking sense. And I don't mean to pick on somebody like an NFL draft insider, because he's by no means the only one that's going to suggest this. Just a representation of a narrative that is going to be out there for several months now. It seems like Cleveland and others tried to do their best to get Jimmy Garoppolo. Teams are getting a hard-on for a guy that has two starts. And knowing how the New England Patriots are, the Patriots get rid of players for a reason. Even if we don't always agree with the reason, even if the reason doesn't always make sense, they get rid of them for a reason. And if they ultimately parted with Jimmy Garoppolo this offseason, then that lets you know that he's not going to be that dude. And history indicates that he's not going to be that dude, in part because you know a bad team's going to trade for him. Furthermore, a team is potentially looking at several premium picks not being available to help out the dude. And you're bringing in a guy that's been involved in the New England way for three years, barely played, having to teach him a new system as a 26-year-old effective rookie at the NFL level. No, no, no! No first-round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo. That's stupid.